Welcome to the Empowerment Show with Melissa Heisler on the Linked Local Network. Link locally, connect globally. Every week, discover new personal choices with practical, inspiring guides. And now, here's Melissa. Happy Tuesday, all, and welcome to the Empowerment Show. I'm Melissa Heisler, Empowerment Coach at It's My Life, and it is your life, live it. Today, we're going to have an awesome discussion about midlife career crisis renewal with Rick Hansen. If you'd like to join the discussion, go to facebook.com slash the empowerment show and type in your question. So let me tell you a little bit about Rick. Rick Hansen is one of the nation's leading experts in guiding mid-career renewal and has spent 27 years in the career and leadership development field guiding thousands of midlife professionals and entrepreneurs to rediscover purpose and passion for their next life chapter. In the early 1990s, he co-founded Centerpoint Institute for Life and Career Renewal, an innovative nonprofit that received national media attention and recognition from career development leaders, including Richard Bowles, author of What Color Is Your Parachute?, in the Career Counselor's Handbook. Rick is currently um, he's currently the founder of Brilliant Next, and he has pioneered a trademark system called New Fire Discovery that has helped numerous mid-career women and men find a new certainty of purpose and direction for their next, next life work path. So welcome to the show, Rick. Thank you, Melissa. I'm thrilled to be here with you. I am so excited to have you here today, and to um, I think the topic that we're going to talk about is so important for so many people right now who have either been thrown into midlife career crisis due to the economy, or I also know that there's so many individuals who are just at that point of waking up and saying something's not right with, with what I've been doing. Yes, I find that we get there either one of two ways. As you say, sometimes the universe gives us a nudge and, you know, pushes us out of an old comfort zone. And, you know, we find in the process that we don't want that back. You know, we actually want something different um, to replace it with. Or, you know, we're doing something, often something that we're proud of and that we've built over time, but the feeling changes. You know, it really has lost its spark. And there's there's this internal sense that there's something more uh, that's next. That's really more fully that could more fully express our, our gifts and our purpose next. And do you find people who who get in that situation of feeling that there there's that something that's next? Um, I think I run across a lot of people that are kind of stuck in that. It's like, well, I know that I'm not satisfied here. I know maybe there's something else, but I have current job but you yeah. know, this is the only thing I can do. Um, is, that probably, is that the biggest hurdle that people have to get over with this process or one of the major ones? It's one of the main ways that we get stuck. And this, you know, this is true for all of us, and not only in career, uh, but any big area of identity. You know, there's often a time when we're in the process of completion or outgrowing something, and it's, in some of the early stages of that, it can be pretty stressful because... It's almost like an internal conflict where part of us is already feeling the call or the nudge <laughs> that, you know, there's something more. Uh, but another part is like, don't you dare rock the boat. You know, there's a lot riding on this. I've worked hard to get here. So it it can be, um, uh, it can definitely be stressful. And you're no um, stranger to this process as well. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what sparked your career of, you know, guiding others in their mid-career renewal. Thanks. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, you know, sometimes we wish that, you know, it's like a dentist still needs to get their teeth worked on sometimes. And, uh, you know, being in this field of working with people going through transition, I have definitely not been immune to that. And, you know, and, and that's okay, even though it's really uncomfortable when we're there. 
um, you and I were talking earlier about about growth. And, you know, if we're growth-oriented people, we're going to outgrow some things, even things that we care about. And that has definitely happened to me. Uh, I got into this field at a relatively young age. I was in my mid-20s, uh, so, you know, half a lifetime ago. Uh, and at that time, they didn't even call it coaching. Uh, one of my first mentors was one of the first people in the industry to start talking about about it as a coaching model. Um, but it was a fabulous fit for me. Um, you know, it was not something I grew up going, oh, I think I'm going to be a career coach. Um, but early in the 90s, when I was pretty young in the career, I was maybe in there about four years, I um, moved up to the Seattle area and ended up partnering with a really talented coach and leader, Carol Vecchio, and we created Centerpoint Institute uh, that's still there and doing a really fabulous work up in Seattle. So if any of our listeners are there, it's a great local resource. Um, and there was a point when I left that, and even though I loved it and I cared about it and had built it to become the you know, really the primary place people would go in Seattle for that kind of change. Um, but it was a change of chapters. And then you and I have talked about a change I went through a few years back that was my last time, what I called between dreams. And I had been working in the corporate arena in career and leadership development in a, in a really interesting niche working with American Indian tribes. And the last couple of years I was flying around the country in a consulting role uh, helping tribes get their programs started, formal mentoring programs, uh, you know, really mentoring young leaders and uh, creating those structures in the organizations. And it was, I cared about it, and there was some really great people involved. And then one year it went from thriving, flying, to falling and crashing in just a few weeks where, you know, it went from six figures to zero. <laughs> um, and that was unexpected because everyone had said, oh, yeah, that's, you know, that industry is recession-proof. Which I think we've all learned. I don't know of any <laughs> industry that is recession-proof at this point. Yeah, I'm guessing a lot of our listeners maybe have been through these kind of unexpected changes. Um, and there was there was some guidance that I received in my spiritual practice, just kind of a, a whisper from spirit early on in that process when I kind of felt like I was in free fall and scrambling. And that the words that came were, this time is important. You're being prepared for your next period of service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just was struck deeply with that, and I held on to it tightly for many months because it was, you know, it was, financially stressful and there was a lot of uncertainty and I was working really hard trying to revive that practice and you know in a immediate job search as we were kind of going through some of our financial resources and nothing was happening um, and it was in that process that you know I, I found at one point in there that, that this was not about a, a challenging job search and it wasn't even about the economy though all those things were true um, but it became clear that it was about a renewal of purpose, uh, you know, that I was working really hard to try to recreate an old comfort zone for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I knew when I got clear that really life was nudging me to do something that had that much more of me. Um, and that was my next step to, you know, in following my calling. And I came to a place that I call new fire, and that's really, you know, standing again in certainty of purpose, uh, in that place in ourselves where we were literally, not literally, <laughs> luckily not literally, but internally, you know, we are just filled with that certainty and that purpose and energy about something we care about. And we know that, you know, even if we don't know what it's going to look like, and we usually don't, but we know that no matter what, whatever's next has to be you know, embody or express this thing because that's what we're here to do. And I, I think and that's that really led to Brilliant Next. <laughs> and that led to Brilliant Next, which um, we will talk about that as well, which is uh, yeah. your current company and, and, um, and focus. But I think you brought up a couple really interesting points is that 
uh, a lot of times, again, you know, we we reevaluate our careers for two reasons. You know, one of them is that we get thrown out of our recession-proof business. Yeah. And the other thing, and I, I really like this, was um, that we outgrow it. And I think that's really important to um, identify. I, I see a lot of people with this right now is that, they outgrow it, and just like you, they tried to hold on to what their comfort zone was. If I just try to do it differently, or what did I do wrong? I used to love this, or you know, and they're trying to hold on to something that's no longer there. Um, and there is that reawakening period of, you know, what this is this is over, uh, and there's there's something new formulating, and um, I, I think that's a kind of encapsulated in what you touched on before, what you call the between dreams time. And I love the image that you have of that um, that dark hallway between that one door closing and that one door opening. And I, I think for some people, you know, no, number one, it's a scary place to be, but number two is yeah. the people who choose to close that first door before they see that nor- new door opening. It's a very difficult time to be in. Yes. And I think you described it well, too, where, <clears throat> you know, just that place of feeling a little paralyzed, um, that one way we really get stuck is we're kind of in our head and we're waiting for an answer because, you know, we get to a point where we're pretty clear what we don't want, even if we're still there. Um, and people say things like, well, I don't want to be here looking ahead a couple of years. Um, so most of the people I work with are actually still employed but they're in that point where they can they just know it's not enough anymore and like you say they feel the tug of that next thing but it's not clear what it is and they're waiting for it to get clear and that's often where we get stuck so even just knowing that there is a period called between dreams um that it's a natural and important part of the process that and because often we think well if i knew what the next thing was well i'd you know I'd just I'd t- make the leap. I'd make the change. Um, but there's a point, the between dreams point, is when we know what we don't want and we can feel the new thing, but it's not clear. And that is maddening, <laughs> just you know, <laughs> not to know. <laughs> it's very madly, maddening. And what's really interesting is I was talking to um, actually a business consultant the other day, and I love mm-hmm. this analogy of uh, working with a startup company and, you know, when do you say, you know, when do you leave that company, when when do you know that a startup company isn't going to work or where are you going to move to that next thing? Yeah. And he said it was very much like dating. You can't mm-hmm. get a new girlfriend while you're still with your current one. And I, I think we see this a lot with people with their jobs as well, is that they still continue to try to make the current girlfriend, the current work, the current job work for them and be passionate for them. And it yes. almost keeps them stuck from seeing what that new thing is. Right. Or another thing that I see is is making a leap, but kind of doing it prematurely. Um mm-hmm where there really is not a new vision yet and there's not new passion. But I had one client who had, you know, she had gone out and started a business uh, because she was really clear that she was done being, you know, in, um, she was a CPA at the time. Um, And that business didn't work. (laughs) Uh, And she told me, she said, I realized later that, you know, I wish I had taken more time to get Mm. clear. She goes, because there was, it was an idea that I liked, but it was, Looking back, it was really more a way out of the old thing rather than really something that felt like a calling. Um, And so it just didn't have the foundation of vision and energy to be the next thing. It was kind of like in the dating analogy, which I love. (laughs) Uh, It's kind of like when you make a relationship switch and very quickly kind of find out that it's like the same relationship in a new phase Uh, because we, we, we are the same us. You know, we're making choices from the same place. And, and I think what happens a lot of the times, and whether we're talking about relationships or jobs, um, yeah. is that we we don't like that discomfort of being alone, of being in the unknown. And yeah. so either we stick with 
the devil we know or we jump into something, like you said, prematurely and we don't take the time to sit in the discomfort to wait for that new thing to come to us. Yes. And and that, one of the, go ahead. Sorry, one of the things that's helpful when people get that there is this period between an ending and a new beginning, um, you know, this between dreams place, and that it's important because it's really the gestation of the new thing, is it's freeing because they realize, oh, I was waiting for clarity. But really, this time period is a period for discovering clarity. And that it is kind of an inside job. I mean, really that that it's not a passive process of waiting, that there are things we can do that if we know that that's the job now is to pay attention, it's like, well, what do I love now? And what's still alive about some of these old things I've done? But what, what do I need different? And, you know, there's really a listening process an active listening process about discovering in ourselves, you know, what what is what is what is alive now? What is the thing that whatever's next it has to be. So is that I know you say there's often uh, a step that people miss in reinventing themselves. Is this that, that active listening waiting period or is there something else that people miss when they're trying to reinvent themselves or their careers? Well, we, we, you know, reinvention we talk about a lot, particularly midlife. You know, it's that sense of, okay, I'm ready for a whole new chapter and one that's more me um, and where I really get paid to do, you know, the thing I would do even if I won the lottery, which is, you know, what we all want. (laughs) Um, And, yeah, the step that's missed is often we're focused on the ideas, we're focused on the you know, what would that look like and that kind of the how. And so so what I found is that rediscovery precedes reinvention. Um, mm-hmm. That if we jump to reinvention, we're looking at, well, what's out there? And rediscovery really begins, it's, it is an internal discovery process. I, I and, love that. Yeah. yeah. And often that's freeing for people to know because when I talk to people who are at this point and we just acknowledge that this is about growth, that it's not just what's next in terms of this climbing a ladder, um, but that we are, it, it's, it's a major change where we're fundamentally saying, who am I now? And that often it's a time where there's a big process of spiritual and personal growth where we're really redefining who we are in a way that's that's um that's more fully us and as part of that often we're coming up against old messages and fears that have partly almost invisibly defined what success was in the past and that's part of what we've outgrown so the reason we can't see the new thing is actually we're in a process of change to even be able to dream a dream that's more true and then to go out and do it. I, 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 there's so much in that, Rick. It's, it's such an easy concept <laughs> or simple concept, yeah. but it's also so deep. You know, as far as empowerment, um, I know when I talk to job seekers as well, they all seem to be looking for something off the rack it's like, okay, yeah. well, I, I need a new job, and let me see if I can fit myself into this. And right. I think it's so important to do, as you say, to do that rediscovery process for yourself, to make this a time not just about the job, but about your personal growth and, and especially about your definition of success. Because I think as we grow and experience new things and age, that definition of success changes. And if we're still holding on to an old definition, that job that we jump into is is not going to be fulfilling for us. Exactly. Nicely said. Um, And, you know, you mentioned how people are often looking around like what's out there, what's off the rack. That's a nice phrase. Uh, Or sometimes they have an idea that they like, but, they, you know, even though it's an idea, it feels like, they're not ready to start or they just, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're almost, they're not ready for it. Um, so one of the main ways we get stuck in that between dreams part is going to the how too quickly. 
um, mm. because in any creative process, if you bring in the how too soon, you kill it. Um, and, you know, I see this where people, like, start doing some discovery and they, like, see something that is important and they get energy for it and then if they go too quickly to, well, how you know, no one gets paid to do that. or And then they just kill the whole process uh, before that new thing has even really taken root and gotten stronger in them and, you know, them they've gotten really clear about, well, what is the heart of that? What's the thing that, that I'm not willing to let go of? Can you talk to us a little bit about the, the process that you use um, through Brilliant Next to help people to to move into this new phase, to move out of limbo, get past the how, allow themselves to really identify what's, what's the right next for them, and then uh, make some steps Step towards that? I'd be happy to. Um, you know, and I, I realize we have a, a pretty short time period, so I'll try just to hit the... So often I talk about that when I work with people, there's three things I hope to give them. And the first is a map, and it's just a deep understanding of how does this process work. And I find that when people have a, a map that, that feels true to them, it lets them trust their instincts again, and they realize, oh, there is, there. It, it gives back hope as well. It's like, ah, okay, well, no wonder I'm not ready for this because I need to do this first, and I'm, I, I want to do that, and I'm ready to do that. So often it lets them see next steps even when they don't have that clear goal they're hoping for. Uh, so the first is a map. The second thing I, I think of as a compass. It is that internal clarity and the certainty of purpose. Um, so I do a process I call new fire discovery, and it's really just a process of creating support and structure um, for for taking the time and doing that discovery work and getting clear. And in many ways, our culture works against that. The pace of things, uh, we have this message almost that like with career, this is a do-it-yourself project. And that is, the if there's one way that people get stuck, that's it. You know, they get out what color is your parachute or they just think about it for five minutes here or there and nothing changes. Uh, I've worked with a lot of people. So it's more than assessment. It's not a head process primarily, mm-hmm. even though there's some good tools out there. Um, so in getting the compass, that's coming to the point in yourself where you're not just thinking about it, but you're actually claiming and committing in a new way to your, you know, what your gifts are, the fact that you are brilliantly talented in certain areas that actually come easily to you um, and that light you up consistently. Um, And that there's impacts that you care about. And they're not impacts. It's not like the Mother Teresa thing. It's not impacts that everyone would agree are like, well, of course that's important. Uh, Because people often think, well, it has to be this social thing. And sometimes it is. But more often there's this impact that just when you get to see that, it makes it all worth it. And it feeds you back. And when you know what that is, you know, then you feel like, okay, it's not just using my gifts, but if I get to use my gifts and I get to see that it leads to this kind of impact, well, wow, <laughs> sign me up. Um, and then the third thing that comes out of that compass is just the passion, the energy. And, and that's a combination of, you know, of tapping into, you know, just our calling. Uh, but also in the process of getting clear about that, we're often – have become more free from old fears than ever before. And it's like part of us that used to be resisting is on board. So we bring more of us to that next thing. Uh, And people say, you know, I am new um, or, you know, I'm a new person uh, as they kind of move into that new chapter. So that's the compass. And then the third thing is really a path. So that's that once you have clarity, often it's still not clear exactly how to do that or what it's going to look like. Um, you know, what's the job title or where, where is that most valuable? So that last part is taking that new clarity back out into the world and finding where the need is. Um, I love that quote, and, and it's become popular recently, which is fabulous, but it's, uh, you know, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then go and do that because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Well, that's that third part is where you actually have become alive again, and now you're going into the world with that compass, and you're saying, now where's the need? Where would I do? 
And what I care about is exactly what's valuable and where someone would pay well for that to happen. And that can be a lot of fun. Yes, and and I think it's so important um, for people to to hear that 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 path comes last. I think that so many people want to jump into the steps to get the job. And I, I love the idea of starting with that map of, you know what, you're going into uncharted territory. Let's get an idea of what this process is and what it looks like to go through it. Because I think a lot of times, like you said, people will pick up a great career change book, but they don't utilize it. And if they can really see what the process they need to go through and that it can't be rushed, that it can give them that sense of, okay, I'm going to go through the process. It's worth it. Yeah. And and it helps you measure progress, too, in a different way when, you know, you don't have the answer yet. But sometimes people are making amazing progress and getting clear. Even just getting clear what you don't want is the first step. And people often don't realize, you know, that that's hard-earned wisdom. It, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think that's I, I work with a lot of type A task people. And so doing yeah. the touchy-feely heart work seems like it's not going anywhere. So to be able to give those tangibles can help a lot of people go through the, the process that needs to happen. Um, and I know we've only got like three minutes here left. There's so much for us to talk about. Um, we could go for a couple hours, couldn't we? I think so. I think so. And I know that you have a video to share with people, so I'm going to make sure that that gets on my website and the uh, the YouTube that I'll put up. So make sure you give me that information when we get off the phone, and uh, we'll share it with the listeners um, to help yes, them go through that. Go ahead. It's actually an easy address as well, so I can give that to people, and then you can add it. Um, later. So it's a, just a three-part video. It really outlines a map, the new fire map, well, which is a whole different way of approaching um, this process. And the people, when they see it, go, oh, it's like some part of me almost already knew that. And it's very freeing and, and hope-giving. So that video is at findnewfire.com. That is very easy to find. Findnewfire.com. Yes. So I will definitely put that out there and, and recommend um, that anybody, I think anybody at any point should probably go through it because, like you said, we're all changing and moving during different parts of our life. Um, One nice thing on the video, too, is people, as they go through the video, they actually map themselves and not just their work but other parts of life. Um, on this, it's really a cyclical change map, um, and people consistently tell me it's extremely helpful and it just takes like 40 minutes. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to go do it once we get off the phone here. And our, our last minute, Rick, um, thank you so much for being on the show. Do you have any parting words you can give our listeners who, who are stuck in that dark hallway between what's unsatisfying to them now or the door that's closed on them and what it is that they're moving into next? Yes, it would just be that you know you came here with something important to give, um, and that nudge that you're feeling. If you're if you're feeling that nudge towards something more, you know, even if other parts of you are going, you know, who are you to think that? Or just you know, it's just a job. Um, if that nudge is there, it's important to pay attention to, and uh, life will support you in moving towards that if you take the little steps. Um, so the words that I was given, you know, I like to give back, and that's, you know, this time is important, and you are being prepared for your next period of service uh, for your um, most passionate next chapter. And those are beautiful words to, to end on, Rick. Thank you so much for being an inspiration and sharing your story. Um, thanks to Rick Hansen for being on the show from Brilliant Next, and you can check him out at findnewfire.com. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me, Melissa. Great to be here with you. Join Melissa Heisler next week right here at The Empowerment Show on the Linked Local Network. Link locally, connect globally. Learn about the next show and listen to previous shows at linkedlocalnetwork.com slash empowerment. 
Join the conversation at Facebook.com slash The Empowerment Show or Twitter.com slash Empowerment Show.